Good afternoon YouTube and welcome back to the Suburban Rifleman. My name is Greg and this video was originally meant to be incorporated into the shooting video that we posted a couple of days ago uh, where we shot the Steyr, the Austrian Steyr Manlicker M9530. But this video turned out to be about 12 minutes in and of itself and I thought it made the overall length of the shooting video a bit too long so I'm posting it as its own separate video. Uh, I just want to talk a little bit about the, the history of the 8x56 rimmed Hungarian uh, rifle cartridge and uh, some Austrian ammo that we're going to be shooting in the M95 shooting video. So check it out. I hope you enjoy. All right, guys. So before we go ahead and shoot the M9530, I thought we'd take a little bit closer look at the ammunition we're going to be using and the NBOC clips that it's loaded into. Um, as you can see, this is original ammo. Um, I do shoot this. It's not particularly rare, but it's not very common either. And a single uh, packet of ammunition like this can sell uh, nowadays anywhere from $25 to $75, depending on where you look. So it's not particularly cheap. Um, it's going to be celebrating its 80th birthday in just a few months. Uh, so I don't shoot this stuff a lot, but if you want to shoot military ammo in your Steyr M95 or M9530, uh, this is pretty much what there is out there. There was Bulgarian ammo. This is uh, Austrian manufactured. There, And you can see it's even got the little uh, German Waffenamt here with the... I picked this packet because the swastika isn't very uh, legible uh, there, but uh, there is Bulgarian ammo also available, but it's uh, even more rare than this stuff. So um, we don't shoot this a lot, but we're going to shoot at least one packet today. And uh, I thought I would take a little bit of a look at it and document it a bit before we fire it off, seeing as how uh, the ammunition itself is an antique and uh, somewhat collectible. Again, not super rare, but not common by any means either. So the 8x56 rimmed cartridge, as it appears, you can see this has a large orange S on the front here. Um, that's to designate the fact that this is not eight, the older 8x50 rimmed ammunition, which had a round-nosed bullet in it. This is the newer 8x56 cartridge with a Spitzer bullet. I can't remember the exact German translation for Spitzer bullet, but the S is for Spitzer. And every M95 rifle that was converted to the new M9530 configuration and rechambered for the 8x56 cartridge was also marked with an S on the top of the chamber uh, to denote that it is ready for the new Spitzer bulleted ammo. Um, so let's take a look inside one of these packets and see what you've got in here. There's just a cardboard end cap here which will lift out. We'll set that over here to the side. And all of the ammunition is preloaded into steel end block clips. There are two in this packet. These packets were designed with these nice uh, thumb and finger cutouts here. You were intended to pull the entire package out in one fell swoop. The problem is the cardboard will often rip here and I don't want to destroy these original packets even though we will be shooting the ammo. I'm saving the boxes so I'm going to be a little bit more careful about it by lifting the top part of this cardboard tab out of the way. And here are our two clips loaded with 8x56 rimmed cartridges. Uh, you can see there's just a, a sort of S-shaped cardboard divider in between them to keep them from rubbing against one another too much. The clips, as you can see, are just uh, sheet metal affairs uh, bent up out of sheet steel and then blued. Um, each clip is also marked with a maker's mark. Both of these have a, a monogram here, a GR monogram for Georg Roth. Uh, Roth manufactured clips 
uh, for 8x56 ammo in uh, Vienna and Bratislava and another location. Uh, clips were also manufactured by Cellier and Below ammunition manufacturers in the Czech Republic um, or at that time Czechoslovakia I guess. 8x56 clips were also manufactured by Hertenberger in Austria which is still very much a going concern when it comes to ammunition manufacture. You can see unlike uh, some other Manlicher designed end block clips, uh, for instance the Carcano, which used uh, straight walled cases uh, and no rims, uh, those clips tend to be uh, symmetrical top to bottom uh, because the cartridges feed pretty much straight out of the clip. But in the case of the 8x56 rimmed, this very strongly tapered case and rimmed ammunition can lead to rim lock in straight clips. So these clips are asymmetrical as you can clearly see. They don't look the same if you hold them upside down. And so these ribs were stamped into the top of the clip to give the end user, the individual soldier, uh, a tactile cue as to which was the top of the clip even in the dark. Uh, the clip is meant to be loaded into the rifle in this manner, I'm not going to do it right at the moment, but uh, I'm not going to actually put it all the way in there. But this is meant to be at the top of the rifle. And so this forward sloping design of the clip allows each individual cartridge to feed off of the cartridge below it uh, without these prominent rims becoming interlocked and making the rifle absolutely inoperable at the very worst time. So each of these cartridges simply pushes out of the clip forward this way. So here's the individual 8x56 rimmed cartridge. As you can see, it's in pretty nice condition. This ammo is, in fact, almost 80 years old. I don't know if you'll be able to make out the head stamp, but there's the Roman numeral 8 at the top here, VIII, -I -I, and the date 1938. So that denotes that this cartridge was manufactured in August of 1938. Again, it's going to be having its um, 80th birthday in just two months. So remarkably good condition considering its age. Uh, this is a mercur mercuric primer. Do keep in mind if you get some of this ammunition to shoot in your M95 rifle, it's uh, should be quite fine. These mercuric primers hold up very well. Uh, I've never had one of these cartridges misfire on me, even after all these years, but this ammo is corrosive. It is very, very corrosive. Um, so it's very important if you shoot this ammo in your original rifle to clean the bore immediately, and that means using either hot soapy water or something with ammonia in it, a, a solution a, a diluted solution of warm water and household ammonia or Windex can work very well. You just put Windex on a couple of patches and swab the bore out. Uh, the nice thing is this is a bolt action rifle. It's not auto loading so the gas doesn't get everywhere. The corrosive uh, salts deposited from our mercuric primers mostly just end up in the bore and maybe slightly into the chamber of the gun. So if you just so if you just swab out the bore in the chamber with uh, some patches that have been uh, wetted with Windex again or ammonia or even hot soapy water, that should dissolve the corrosive salts and acids in the bore. Make sure you dispose of those patches carefully. They will have a certain amount of mercury on them. Maybe wearing rubber gloves might be a good idea. Then make sure you dry the bore in chamber very thoroughly oil them, and you should have no problems with corrosive ammo. Uh, there's a lot of people who will not shoot old corrosive ammo because they're afraid of what it's going to do to their rifle. But as long as you follow a good cleaning regimen, there's no problem whatsoever. Now the 8x56 rimmed cartridge is a modification of the earlier 8x50 rimmed cartridge, and it came about around 1930, so it's not that old a cartridge. But the case itself is based on much earlier design uh, principles. And as you can see, this really follows sort of the 19th century pattern of smokeless cartridge design. You've got a 
strongly tapered case here to aid in initial extraction. You've got a very sharply tapered shoulder, a very deep and long shoulder also to aid in cartridge extraction. Um, and you've got a rim, a very prominent rim, which also aids in extraction. Um, and there's nothing wrong with the 8x56. As you will see uh, when we shoot in a few minutes, it, uh, it's quite a powerful cartridge. Uh, it's very effective. But even by 1906, which is 112 years ago now, when our own 30-06 cartridge was developed, the uh, cartridges like the 8x56 rimmed with their prominent rims and their tapering cases looked already as frumpy and old-fashioned as your Dowager Ant. Um, this was a much more modern cartridge, a much less sloping shoulder design. It is now rimless, so the diameter of the rim is roughly the same as the diameter of the base of the case uh, to aid in feeding uh, while still giving good positive extraction. Um, this is an old, old cartridge, and it just looks totally modern compared to this one. Uh, but again, the 8x56 was a perfectly uh, capable cartridge. It was plenty powerful. It was throwing a heavy bullet. Any one or anything that got shot by this cartridge probably couldn't tell much difference uh, from being shot by this cartridge. Of course, today we've moved on to much smaller bore cartridges like the 556 by 45 which is current, the current standard for the U.S. Army, and this adheres to much more modern cartridge design principles, even though this cartridge itself is about 60 years old. But again, the 8x56 cartridge was a very effective cartridge. It served from the late 19th century through World War I and up into World War II. These rifles saw service uh, even during World War II uh, with the Bulgarian Army, the Hungarian Army, the Italian Army, and even the Germans uh, issued it to some of their police forces. So the 8x56 rimmed is no slouch, and as we will now see, even 80 years later, even with 80-year-old ammunition, it still shoots just fine and uh, would be a very effective hunting cartridge or... I don't know, maybe even a home defense cartridge today. I kind of doubt that anyone's going to use a rifle like this for any sort of serious work, but it's still pretty cool and a neat cartridge. And I wanted to document it before we fired these off because in just a few minutes, this bullet is going to be gone. And, uh, you know, it's a piece of history. So we've documented it. I think about as well as we can do. And you probably didn't tune into this video to hear me talk ad nauseum about the cartridge. You tuned in to see the rifle firing. So let's do it. All right, guys, so that was some 1938 vintage Austrian manufacture, 8x56 rimmed Hungarian uh, rifle cartridges. Um, as I mentioned, this ammunition was also manufactured in Bulgaria. Uh, presumably it was made some other places as well, but Austrian and Bulgarian is really all that you see on the American market. It's the only thing that was ever imported in shooting quantities to the American market. And, uh, but the Bulgarian, I have some of the Bulgarian, it's a little bit less common. Uh, but I have a tendency to shoot it more often because it doesn't have the, uh, the Austrian head stamps. It doesn't come in quite as fancy packaging. Um, either one, they're both good ammunitions, um, and they're really all that's available on the surplus market uh, as far as 8x56 rimmed Hungarian. Um, so it's out there, it's kind of expensive, it's antique in and of itself, but it does work. And uh, in small quantities, I am in the main woods here and there are a few mosquitoes around. If you see me swatting at myself, uh, that's why. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button down below. If you didn't like it, go ahead and click the dislike button. Uh, it won't hurt my feelings. Well, it might hurt my feelings a little bit, but it helps me to determine what kind of content to generate for the channel in the future. Uh, there's no point in me making videos if you guys don't want to watch them. Uh, if you did enjoy this video and you'd like to see more content like this in the future, please consider subscribing to my channel. It's very important. Uh, YouTube no longer cares about the total number of views your channel gets. They only care about how many subscribers you have. 
Uh, it makes me feel good to see people watching my videos and the view counts rising, but the best way to help keep me here on the air is to subscribe to my channel. It doesn't cost anything, it takes a fraction of a second, and you can always unsubscribe in the future if you decide you don't like my channel. And if you're already a subscriber, uh, go ahead and click the little bell icon down below. What that will do is YouTube will send you notifications when I do post new content to the channel. And when I do, I hope to see all of you here at that time. Later, guys.